My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me now and we will explore these topics and so much more with fascinating guests, authors, and experts who will guide us to Destination Unlimited. In the mid-1990s, I attended, graduated from, and was ordained through the New Seminary of New York. This groundbreaking interfaith seminary was founded by my spiritual teacher, Rabbi Joseph Gelberman. One of the concepts that Rabbi Gelberman shared was that of the fractured Messiah. He taught that people of virtually every major religion and faith were awaiting the return of their respected Savior and teacher. Christians are awaiting the second coming of Christ, Jews are awaiting Moshiach, Muslims are awaiting the Imam Mahdi, Hindus are awaiting the final incarnation of Vishnu, and Buddhists are awaiting the Bodhisattva Maitreya. In a world filled with strife, hatred, divisiveness, anger, and fear, is there a great teacher who we may look to for answers and deliverance? As in ages past, when humanity had reached a point of crisis, there are those who advocate that a great teacher has come to bring the wisdom needed to help us solve our problems and evolve to a higher level of consciousness. According to Share International, represented by Felicity Elliott, chief editor of Share International magazine, the teacher for this age is Maitreya, and he has been in the everyday world since 1977 assisting behind the scenes. He's expected to make a major public appearance very soon. Felicity Elliott has been an active member of the Worldwide Share International Group since 1976. She explains information presented and brought up to date by founder Benjamin Krem and draws from a background in the ageless wisdom teachings, Benjamin Krem's books and her long association with him, as well as more than 40 years study of the works of the Tibetan master Joal Kul. She lives in Amsterdam and joins me this week to discuss the work of Share International and Maitreya. Please welcome to Destination Unlimited, Felicity Elliott. Good evening, Felicity. Hello, thank you. And thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's a great pleasure, and I'm very pleased to be able to talk to you. And I am so interested in your introduction straight away. Well, go ahead, ask me. <laughs> well, you brought together so well all the idea of, and, and I'm fascinated by the idea of, I've never heard the phrase fractured uh, teacher or fractured uh, uh, help coming to us. But that's exactly what Chair International is saying and what Benjamin Krem and his master said for many years, that there is one figure, but expected under many different names by all sorts of religions. And of course, this isn't a religious topic. Um, it, it has religious overtones, I know, and it, it meets with religion. But in fact, this is for all humanity, for those who have beliefs uh, along the religious lines and people who of no faith. Well, what my teacher taught us was that if each of us would look within, into our hearts and into our souls, we'd recognize that that teacher was already here and start seeing it within one another. And at that point, the great teacher would arrive. But let's talk more about your work. Felicity, please share with us about your path and how it led to your association with Share International. Well, that links very well with what you've just said, Victor, because in fact, my path started... Um, well, very long time ago, but really because I began very early to have a sense of what you've just talked about, which is the God within or the, the divine within or the spark of God, however one wants to put it, a soul, a higher self. And I had a sense of that, but I needed to sort of find it in outside um, outside of myself, as it were. And I looked at religion, but that wasn't quite 
it didn't wasn't quite enough for me. And I looked at philosophy and various other sort of um, areas of knowledge, philosophy, psychology, and pol politics, and so on. But when I um, discovered uh, the work of uh, Benjamin Krem, and that was in 1976 um, uh, in London, um, it brought together so many things. It was a synthesizing view of reality, and that included the idea of um, God transcendent, but also God immanent, which you've just talked about. So the sense of yourself as being part of a divine whole, your, se your sense of yourself as being somehow connected with everything, interconnected, in fact. Now, who was Benjamin Krem and what led him to found Share International? Mm. Benjamin Krem um, was a very interesting and extraordinary man. He was um, what we would call a um, rather developed, highly developed person, highly evolved. And he, uh, through his studies and through his um, the sense of, well, actually, where, where he his consciousness was, he was able to be, after many years of training by his master, he was able to be in contact with one of the masters of the wisdom, masters of wisdom, um, which is to say a master, if I can just quickly define it, a master from our point of view, from the point of view of the ageless wisdom teachings, and that's the point of view from which I'm speaking, a master is someone who has mastery over himself, mastery over all levels that we know of as the human condition, and they, the masters have progressed to such a state of perfectionment, if we can call it that, so that they no longer need to reincarnate, to take incarnation on this planet. So they're here as the guardians, as the guides, as the invisible helpers, as our elder brothers who uh, are there and have always been there. They have never abandoned humanity, and they have always been standing behind the scenes to, to help, to guide, to advise, to rescue, to comfort, and so on. And Benjamin Krem um, a was a disciple of one of the masters and was able to be in constant contact with his master telepathically and to be the recipient, therefore, of the up-to-date information about the emergence of that world teacher we've just talked about, the person that you mentioned as the fractured messiah or the, the, new, the new Buddha, the new Krishna, and so on. And so Benjamin Krem's work was to bring to, to the West um, information about the coming of that awaited one, long-awaited one, together with a number of the masters. And um, that is what's happening now. Why is the world teacher here now as opposed to at, at other times in human history uh, when things were so terrible? Mm. Well, um, I'm sure that you and many people who are listening today have heard the idea of cyclic revelation. So the idea that every time a new age is inaugurated, every time also that humanity is uh, really up against it, when humanity has come to a point where it really needs the advice, the help, new teachings, a teacher comes. Um, I think it is in Hindu scriptures that I think Krishna says, when there is a withering of the law, then I come, come forth. And uh, we are at an interesting time in our history, as you know. Uh, um, for example, humanity as a whole is actually ready to receive a new teacher because people are looking around and saying the world as it is at the moment doesn't answer my needs. I think every sing most people at the moment in the world can say quite honestly that they're looking for some sort of help, guidance, uh, hope that there's something better because things look rather dire. And the teacher comes. Uh, you know the old adage, when the pupil is ready – the teacher comes. And that's what's happening now. Humanity, on the one hand, is ready for a new revelation, a new insight, a new step in our evolution. Because, in fact, what we're talking about is the evolution of consciousness. And on the other hand, of course, things are so bad in the outer world, as you can see from the breakdown of our political systems, economic systems, social systems, and so on. So we definitely are in need of help and advice 
But I'm not suggesting that the masters are coming to do it for us, by the way, nor this teacher. They will simply be advisors. They are the wise elder brothers. And do teachers have a tendency to appear randomly? Or we had talked about the times of of great despair in the world. There have been other appearances throughout history, throughout uh, humankind's history of of, of great teachers. But what about this randomness? Is there randomness in this appearance? No, um, it's not randomness. I mean, it might appear to be so on the surface, but if we look at the the cycles of of our historical development, you will see that um, a teacher has come at times when, for example, a new era is to be inaugurated. And now we've just passed out of the time, the age of, known as the age of Pisces, and we're coming into a new age, and we're already somewhat into this new age, the age of Aquarius. Everyone's heard of that. And this is a time of great transition, hence all our problems, because you have people holding on to the old, as you can see, and you have people who are pushing forward to the new. And everything proceeds according to... um, a very, if I can put it this way, a very broad outline of a plan. I mean, we are part of a great life, a great consciousness. And this consciousness, this being, is working out its its um, purposes. And we are part of that, all of us. And as such, we're all interdependent. And does it require enough people to open their hearts and create, so to speak, a critical mass of desire for this change? Certainly that helps because there is such a thing as invocation, the invocative uh, cry from humanity for help, for advice. And I think that we all unconsciously are doing this right now in our own lives, hoping, begging, uh, looking for some light at the end of of the tunnel, help, some advice. And I think that's where humanity is now, both recognizing the need for help, but also being open to it accessible. My guest this week on Destination Unlimited is Felicity Elliott of Share International, and we'll be back with more Felicity after these words from the Own Times Radio Network. Own Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Tune in to The Practical Intuitive, Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more. All to help you tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with, all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese. And guess what? Egg rolls showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. Hey, hon. What you doing with your fun? Do flowers have best friends? I don't know. Hey, look. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Back on Destination Unlimited, my guest this week is Felicity Elliott. She's the chief editor of Share International Magazine. And we're talking about the coming of the world teacher, Maitreya. Felicity, how do we know that it's true that Maitreya is here and is the true world teacher? That's a wonderful question. And uh, Benjamin Krem always used to start his lectures. Benjamin Krem, by the way, died in 2016. And um, he always used to start his lectures by saying, well, 
I'm putting forward, I'm putting to you a particular uh, version of, a vision of reality. I'm giving you this information. It comes from my master. I can't prove anything to you. However, there are a number of ways that you might approach this. One is to look at it and see whether it simply makes sense. Does it chime with your highest most critical approach to things? Does it, again, perhaps resonate with your intuition? Do you intuitively know that there must be something to this story? Thirdly, you could think about, are there things going on in the world, perhaps what people would call spiritual events, that tend to um, support such a, a view of life, that there is more to life than simply the materialistic, commercialized, everyday reality uh, or unreality that we're living in. And then you might consider perhaps through yourself and your own experiences, looking at um, what's happening in the wider world and the changes that are taking place on all sorts of levels, the spiritual and the completely, you know, the outer world as well. We can't prove it. However, people who do meditate and who are sensitive to energies do sense that there's something new happening. And people who uh, take part in meditation and a uh, particular type of meditation that Benjamin Clem uh, introduced through his, uh, his master introduced it to the world through him, um, know from a sense of an experience of the energies. And of course, something else I'd like to mention is in Share International magazine, which is, was launched in 1982, um, in Share International magazine, we publish monthly letters which we receive from readers and from people all over the world talking about experiences that they've had of special figures or um, unusual people who've saved them or helped them in some way. They're always extraordinary and definitely worth a read. Whether you believe it or not, simply take it as a hypothesis. But as I say, we can't prove it as such. But, you know, um, judge, judge the tree by its fruit is what is said in the uh, uh, number of scriptures. Tell us about that special meditation that Benjamin Krem taught. Mm. Um, Benjamin Krem's master uh, instigated the uh, beginning of a group in London in 1974, and he suggested to Benjamin Krem that he gather together a group of people, people he knew, and introduce to tell them the information about the coming of the masters, the coming of Maitreya, and his the priorities for the new time, and also to introduce them to a new form of meditation. This meditation is called transmission meditation for the simple reason that we actually function as um, some sort of, yes, you could call it, call it almost like a, a transformer. Energies are put through by the masters, put through the higher chakras and sent out into the world to help wherever necessary. Now, we don't do that. We don't do the sending of it. We simply act as transformers, and the masters send the energies out. Um, they also build up a reservoir of energies, and it is a form of service. But this is a form of service to the world, working together with the masters. At the same time, it also helps one's individual development. So it's an act of service. And the most important thing about it is that it is a group meditation uh, because the energies of Aquarius with its new qualities for us, you know, humanity is still getting used to these new energies and the feel of them. They are to do with synthesis and they work chiefly and, and actually only <laughs> through groups. So it is a group meditation. And you see, because of the influence of the Aquarian energies, people are beginning to do things and to relate more directly to working and cooperating in groups, because people see, quite obviously, that um, it is the way forward to work in groups. So this meditation, this type of meditation can be done uh, alongside your own personal meditation. It doesn't interfere with that. Um, and we have groups around the world who are doing this kind of work. And it's an act of service, as I say. And how can our listeners find out more about these meditations? 
Right. Well, if anyone's interested in a form of meditation which will give them an opportunity to serve, I suggest going to our website. Uh, our new website is under construction, but so bear with us. But at the the web, web address you need is um, www.share-international.org. And there's a section there about meditation and service. And um, it's, as I say, an easy way to serve the planet. It helps and rest helps to restore the planet itself. It helps humanity. And it's a, a way of working together in group formation, cooperating with the masters. Now, I mentioned in the introduction to our program that the Bodhisattva Maitreya is who the Buddhists were expecting to return as the newest uh, incarnation of the original Buddha energy. According to Cher and according to what work you have done and Benjamin Krem has done, who is Maitreya? Right. Um, yes, the uh, Buddhists have the name correct. And the Buddha, before he uh, left, left, uh, he actually talked about the coming one, the fifth Buddha, and he mentioned him by name, Maitreya Buddha. Now, I know that many Buddhists um, expect him in 25,000 years' time, something like that. Nevertheless, um, Maitreya is his name, and that is a personal name. And uh, why we can at the same time say this is a teacher for all humanity and uh, is because he comes and wants to be known very simply as the teacher. He has never left the planet. He has always been on the planet. So it's not so much a return to the planet as a coming forward into the modern world, into everyday life. He has lived for thousands of years. I know this sounds far-fetched to, to many people, but it is known in the East that uh, ascended masters, um, the masters of wisdom, can live for thousands of years, perhaps in the same body. And Maitreya himself has never left the planet. He lived and had his abode in the Himalayas. And in uh, 1977, he returned to the modern world um, in a very simple, um, common sense way, as you can possibly imagine. He simply took a plane, land, and had time to uh, acclimatize. I think it was in Karachi, and then entered the modern world, which was London. And he made London his center, or let's say his center of focus, his headquarters for the time being. But we're talking about an omniscient, omnipresent being. He, has, uh, he is the world teacher. He worked through the Master Jesus, who was a disciple of his. Now, the Master Jesus is now on the planet, is in Rome, on the outskirts of Rome, and is the teacher or the master who is, let's say, has responsibility for the Christian churches and many other, um, um, other activities. He works closely with Maitreya. The same happened with Gotama, Prince Gotama, who was a disciple, and he was in the same way uh, overshadowed by the being that we know as the Buddha. And so the relationship between, let's say, the higher, more evolved being, the Buddha, working through Prince Gotama, is exactly the same as um, Maitreya, the world teacher, working through the disciple Jesus in Palestine 2,000 years ago. The Master Jesus and Maitreya work very closely together. Um, and Maitreya is here to inaugurate a new age, and he brings new teachings. Humanity is ready for it. And he has certain priorities. Um, his priorities precisely match those of any person of goodwill who loves humanity, who loves his fellow men, who loves the planet and wants to see that both all kingdoms of nature and humanity prosper and develop as we should. And our name, Share International, is actually um, nothing to do with the stock markets, but everything to do with the idea of sharing, the need for the redistribution of the world's resources along equitable lines so that everybody has enough. And I know that this idea is grain, gaining traction throughout the world. The people are beginning to say, really, if we see ourselves as one, if humanity is one, 
one family, brothers and sisters together, then surely we need to treat each other as such. That is a message that I certainly can say amen to, absolutely. You had mentioned Maitreya and uh, Jesus. Uh, Are they accompanied by other teachers of wisdom? Yes, they are. Uh, At the moment now, there are some uh, 14 masters in the world together with Maitreya. And the masters are... um, I know when people hear words like masters and Christ and and so on and so on, they think it's in the realm of religion and they think it's something sort of uh, far away and abstruse and abstract and and theoretical. The masters are the most practical people uh, with practical modern solutions to our problems. And Maitreya is the epitome of someone who is practical and modern and down to earth and at the same time brings the the wisdom of the ages and insight which pierces to the heart of all of our problems and he says we need to share we need to think about ourselves as being one being and then begin to put the world to rights so he has a number of priorities which we can talk about in a few minutes but he uh And the masters are so imminently practical, down to earth, and yet full of the wisdom of, as I say, of the ages. My guest is Felicity Elliott. She's the chief editor of Share International magazine. Felicity, please tell our listeners where they can find more about Share International, about you and about the work of Maitreya. Right. Uh, Anyone interested in our work should go to a website, wwwshare hyphen international.org and we'll be back with more of Felicity Elliott Share International and the work of Maitreya after these words on the Own Times Radio Network You're listening to OTRFM part of the IOM Radio Network Humanity Healing International is a small nonprofit with a big dream Since 2007, HHI has been working tirelessly to bring help to communities with little or no hope. Our projects are not broad mandates, nor are they overnight solutions, but they bring the reassurance that no one is alone and that someone cares. To learn more, please visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hey, everyone. You know, let's all stop what we're doing right now and take a moment. That felt good, huh? Just like that, we had a nice special sort of moment together. Of course, they don't all need to be quiet moments to be special. They could be loud moments, goofy moments, sporty moments, dorky moments. Moments where we talk or walk or just hang out. It doesn't really matter. They all count. Because every time dads like us take a moment like that to spend with our kids, well, it's pretty momentous. (laughs) Sounds like somebody agrees. So let's take a moment to make a moment. Today, call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicis, on The Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. Steven. Who said that? Me, down here. Ugh, what are you, a yellow booger? I'm a banana slug, Steven. What are you doing in my room? I'm your sense of adventure. It's been a long time since we've had an adventure in the forest. Mom took me to the forest last year. I'm a slug, Steven. It took me a long time to get here. You're right. I should get out. Yeah, the forest is not that far away. Hey, Mom, come to the forest where the more adventurous you lives. Check out discovertheforest.org for cool places nearby. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. On Destination Unlimited, my guest this week is Felicity Elliott, the chief editor of Share International Magazine. Felicity, before the break, you had mentioned locations in the United States and Canada. Please share those with our audience. Right. If I can suggest that people look at www.share-international.org. 
.us and similarly .ca for Canada. And they'd find um, if people are also interested in other languages, go to share-international.org and forward slash languages. And you'll find all sorts of information in various languages because the magazine and our work has been translated into a number of different languages. So I think there's plenty for people to find there. Thank you. Now, earlier in the show, we talked about spiritual masters and mastery and masters of wisdom. Do we all, all of us everyday human beings, have the potential to become masters? Oh, wonderful. I'm so glad you asked that question. Yes, because it's something I, I wanted to say. Yes, precisely. We, all of us, are on a path, on a journey to developing ourselves uh, life after life, through various incarnations, um, if everything's going according to plan, it'll be an upward spiral so that we eventually grow into more of what we essentially are, which is a divine being. We are all divine beings. We just have to recognize it and realize it. Now, the people have probably heard the phrase self-realized or realized. That is exactly what the masters are. They are just like us, but they have actually realized and fully uh, exp and can fully express their divinity. And we're on the way to that. That it is possible to achieve, well, we can see it and that, that, it, that is guaranteed by the fact of the masters. So we're all on our way. We're all, it's as if we're all started on a journey. Some started earlier, some start later. But we all uh, move towards the development and actually the broadening and the deepening of our awareness so that we become aware of more and more and more of this reality, which is in fact there is nothing but divinity. There's nothing but God, if you want to call it that. There's nothing but consciousness throughout the universe. And we are part of this uh, in the Bible and in cert certain other scriptures. There is a similar phrase, this life in whom we live and move and have our being. And we're part of that. And so the masters have been known throughout history. There are sometimes, if we go back to history, they are the well-known figures of the past, and they are now masters. And we similarly are on that path and moving forward on this journey of evolution. Because we're talking about, as I said, consciousness, the development and the evolution of consciousness. You had mentioned Share International's practice of transmission meditation. Are there other things that each of us can do to help prepare us for mastership? You know, some of the best the, the best things that we can do is actually try to serve and improve life and the planet. Uh, when I say the planet, I mean all life on it. Make life better, improve life for all in whichever way you feel called to serve. Now, that might be through uh, taking um, – part in environmental projects. It might be you're serving some people in your neighborhood. However you feel called to serve, to help, to improve, start serving, start um, applying yourself and all of your qualities, all of your abilities, and you'll find that they grow. The more you work, the more you serve, the more you try to help and improve things, you'll see that you grow, and this is the way forward. Service and meditation are the two great levers uh, which bring us forward and develop us into an eventual mastery. And you know, the um, great names of the past, for example, the Beethovens, the Mozarts, the Einsteins, the all of the people that you can mention, all of the great thinkers, all of the great inspired people of the past, have been people who are a little bit ahead of us uh, on this journey. But they are moving, whatever their path, they are moving or have moved towards mastery, towards a fuller and deeper understanding of the nature of reality, which makes them omniscient, omnipresent, makes them able to remain on the planet when they do, to help this planet and all the life streams on the planet. So service and meditation, those are the two great things that move us forward. 
And you had mentioned volunteering for causes great and small. And my personal share with our listeners tonight is that you can start with very simple acts of kindness. Be kind to someone. If you see someone who's having a difficult day, be kind to them. Express your compassion to them. Go out and do something nice for them. And even a smile is an act of compassion. So it doesn't have to be anything world-shaking or shattering. But simple things that you would like to receive yourself, if you can express those to others, you're well on the way. That's right, absolutely. Now, so Maitre is the world teacher, and he embodies the Christ consciousness or energy. And as you had mentioned before, the linking between Maitre, as you know Maitre, and Jesus somewhere on the outskirts of Rome. Is there a difference between world teacher and Christ? No, they're one and the same, but let me put it this way. Um, just as we have, let's say, the CEO or the manager, you know, um, so the Christ is, Maitreya, his personal name, is the one who holds the office of the Christ within that body of, of, of masters that we call the spiritual hierarchy of our planet, the overseers and the guides. So he holds the office of Christ, um, and it is an office, huh? it is a, um, a position, as it were, um, and the masters are his disciples, and they work daily with him. Now, um, in the future, in 2,000 years' time, 2,500 years' time, there will be a new holder of that office of world teacher. And that person, that being, is already known. He's one of the masters, and he's already preparing himself, as it were, um, for the uh, time in which he will take over that role. So the Christ is and the name of an office, it's, he's the, and he is, his personal name is Maitreya, and his priorities at the moment, and by the way, he simply wants to be known as the teacher, and he doesn't want people to run after him or worship him because this is not a religion. He says he's a simple man, come to us with solutions for our problems, and his priorities at the mo are um, very basic, simple, um, everyday uh, factors which would make for life for all of us and make for a just and decent and sane society. And those priorities are, um, yes, food, enough food for everyone, health care for everyone, shelter, adequate shelter, education, and at the moment, of course, also the need we need to look after our planet and to restore it to health. And as you can see, young people throughout the world are taking this up and are able to respond to the new energies and respond to these new ideas, consciously or unconsciously, you know. Not everybody who has worked with a master or works with a master is conscious of that contact. But those are the priorities, things that are simple, that we can do, we have them within our grasp. We just need to put them into effect. We need to implement them and start making a saner world for all of us. The noun Christ comes from the Greek Christos, which means anointed. Does that mean that as we work this way, we're going to reach and achieve that anointment? Yes. You know, um, anointment, perhaps we can we talk about it in a number of ways. I'm not sure how you mean it, but I, I take it in the broadest sense. And I think that what we can say is as we develop, there are certain stages and certain points of uh, development of our uh, intuition, our awareness, and they're marked off along the path uh, in particular ways which are known in um, the Ageless Wisdom teachings as you can call them initiations, but they're simply points of progress, a progress noted as it were, and I would call those, uh, 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 let's say, analogous with the idea of anointment. So gradually one is sort of anointed further and further, as it were, let's say, into the inner realities, the inner workings of and the nature of God. The Those who are of the apocryphal belief believe that the return of Christ, for example, mm -hmm. the return of the great figures means really the end of the world, or perhaps the end of the world as we know it. But what you're saying is the opposite of that, isn't it? Yes, quite the opposite. But I know where the, the problem lies. It's this idea of coming at the end of the world or coming at the end of an age. Now, from the 
the ageless wisdom point of view, from the esoteric point of view, um, the um, idea that it's at the end of the world um, is slightly erroneous and perhaps has to do with um, uh, mistaken translation at some point. But in fact, it is to do with the end of an age as there's a transition from one age to another. Look, we know that uh, Christianity, for example, the last 2,000 years ago, 2,000 years, was um, colored by a particular kind of idealism. And we know, for example, that in the age of Pisces, Pisces was always, um, uh, the fish, the symbol of the fish was always identified with um, early Christianity and often is still today. And uh, now that we're moving into another age, you have new energies and you have a new reality, a new awareness. That's why the masters can come now. That's why Maitreya can come now. Um, and uh, that is where we, where humanity is now. We are ready for new revelation. Let's put it that way. You know, it's interesting. I was born in 1953, and uh, as such, I was part of the age of the 60s and 70s growing up. And we had so much hope and so much change was in the air, love and peace, equality. What happened? Yeah, what happened? Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> do, do, we have, do I have time for this? Well, um, yeah, you start it and we'll continue in the next segment. All right. Well, I'll tell you what happened, actually, is that after the First World War and then the Second World War, and, and um, esoteric teachings see that as one war, there was a hope that, and particularly with America's help, with the, with the um, uh, help that they gave to Europe at the time, there was a hope that things would change and that we wouldn't fall back to those old ways. And perhaps we can take up when we come back, what happened after that and how we find ourselves where we are now with gross materialism and the forces of materiality really appearing to have the upper hand sometimes. My guest this week on Destination Unlimited, Felicity Elliott, the chief editor of Share International Magazine, will be back with more Felicity after these words on the Own Times Radio Network. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are, you are the, the inspired, inspired and, and the inspiration. inspiration. Change and growth are part of natural life, and also part of your spiritual life. Everyone needs support and guidance, especially during life passages. Upgrade yourself with the Ohm Times Experts program. With Ohm Times Experts, you have access to the best intuitive coaches, spiritual teachers, counselors, astrologists, and oracles. Our team was carefully selected so you can trust. Find out more at experts.ohmtimes.com. When Dad needed help getting around, I became his driver. Soon enough, it was up to me to be his housekeeper and financial manager, too. When he moved in, I became his cook and even his nurse. But no matter what roles I play, I know I'm still his daughter. We understand the roles you play. So to help, we created aarp.org slash caregiving, where you can connect with experts and other caregivers. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Bill Maher. I can find humor in almost anything, but one thing I never laugh about is cruelty to animals. If you don't get the joke either, write People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, 501 Front Street, Norfolk, Virginia, 23510.
Back on Destination Unlimited, my guest this week is Felicity Elliott, the chief editor of Share International Magazine. Felicity, before the break, we were talking about what happened to the generation, my generation, our generation, who came after World War II and had positivity and hope and the concepts of peace and love and sharing into the 60s and 70s, and then all of a sudden something happened. What do you think happened? Well, um, from from my point of view, and I think also Benjamin Cram spoke about this quite quite often, is there was the growth, unfortunately, of a kind of gross materialism, a kind of materiality set in. Now it was natural, and like it's co- completely understandable after the World Wars that people sort of longed for com- material comfort after the suffering and so on. But that is exactly what the, the hierarchy and the masters had hoped would be rather different. The uh, hope was that humanity, having gone through the terrible sufferings and uh, tribulation and so on of the two world wars would see that we need to work towards peace towards brotherhood and to have these uh, as our highest and best ideals to move us forward what happened in fact was that we had the growth of materialism and in a nutshell commercialization in britain and america in various countries throughout the world you had the growth of and the coming forward and the growing influence of leaders who were really aligned with, let's say, the profit motive and the growth of of multinationals and so on continued apace so that nowadays we have multinationals uh, that are far more powerful and richer than simple ordinary countries. They these powerful forces can actually even bring countries down or cripple their economies if they so wish. And they have a hold on humanity at the moment through, let me just say it, commercialization and commodification of almost every aspect of our lives so that our health care, our education, our, our prisons, our prisons are, are, are making a profit Um, people are making profit out of people's illness Uh, we are making profit out of education and so on and so on all of these things which um, may make a profit but not to the extreme that is happening now and so there is this kind of commodification and almost seeing people as judging people by the amount of money they have, by their wealth, by their power. And this is the wrong way to go because it drives us apart. And uh, at the same time, I have to say that there is a huge upwelling, a surge of exactly the opposite. People are moving away from that materiality now, seeing that gross materialism just doesn't work anymore and that we need to live Uh, far more simply and more correctly in line with what our planet provides. You know, we're on a finite system, and yet we live as if we have infinite resources. We can continue exploiting each other and our planet as if there's no tomorrow. And as you can see, people are responding and rejecting those old ideas and responding to the new. And that is why Maitreya can be here. That is why the masters can be here. And they come not a moment too soon, as you can see, but they come at the right moment because we're ready. And some of us are longing for change and some of us are working for change. And I'm sure your listeners are the sort of people who are working for change and looking for a new way forward. And yet with so many of us looking for change, recognizing the need for each of us to become part of the world community, to help each other and to give love to one another, we see this resurgence of nationalism. We see this resurgence, especially in the West, between the United States and and the European market. Why? 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 I think, you know, it's the answer lies in the forces of materiality. Um, There are forces who are definitely against the changes, and they are the old forces. Let let me put it this way. Um, They belong to the previous age, and there is a new age being born. And we are seeing the um, convulsions of the old age as it passes away. And we're seeing the, the, the birth pangs of the new. And that's where we've got stuck at the moment. We're in this transition. But at the same time, those forces of materiality, um, those 
people who with the power and vested interests who are desperate to hold on to what they have are putting up a huge fight and are doing all they can in political terms, economic terms, socially, through the justice system. Beware of people um, destroying or distorting the rule of law in any country. We have to be aware of this. How about the assault on the media at the moment and the idea of we cannot even trust the facts or truth so people become confused? We have to stand for what is true. We have to stand for the facts. We have to continue to have a fiery heart full of love for every single human being and the planet. We have to work for the change, and we have we should not allow ourselves to be daunted or distracted or sidelined by these forces which really seek to hold on to the old ways because we are new people, we have a new awareness, it's growing both the people like me who are young in heart and the young people see the way forward. And uh, that's the hope. And we have to work for it. When will we see Maitreya and how can we recognize him and know that he really is the world teacher? Mm. Uh, first of all, Share International will not, under any circumstances, be pointing to one person and saying, that's him. Why? He's working at the moment incognito, still working uh, largely unknown, but he has appeared throughout the world on various media shows on television and on internet uh, radio. Now, he is speaking not as himself, simply as an ordinary Mr. So-and-so, and he is putting forward his ideas for a new world, for a new decent sane society, which would be based on the idea of the fact that we're all one, that this is one family, one unit. And you will recognize him firstly from what he's saying, because he will be calling for justice, for peace, for trust. Because if you don't have trust, you won't, ha you can't have peace. And we, you know, you need to have peace in order to start making new systems that will benefit the whole of humanity. So he'll be talking about peace and justice, the need for sharing, equitable redistribution of the world's resources. At the same time, we'll recognize him because of enormous outflow of energy from him. As you mentioned yourself earlier on, he is the, um, he is the embodiment of the Christ consciousness, of the Christ energy, the energy of the Christ, which for many people is something that they experience daily. If people are sensitive to energies and they meditate, or they don't even meditate, but they are devoted to the service of humanity, people have an experience of the heart. And I don't mean the physical heart, I mean the heart center, which vibrates, which resonates, which responds to beauty, to love, to kindness that you mentioned. And when Maitreya speaks and when they see him on television, they will know him by this outflow of energy and they will also know him by what we will experience collectively throughout the world, which is a, a general telepathic, being in telepathic contact, he will take telepathic contact with humanity and speak to us all, make his appeal for us to change our ways, to step into our divinity, to become the, the divine beings that we are, and to begin the hard work of building a new world. What may those who resonate with this message do to help? I think that, first of all, I would say, seek some way, look for some way that you yourself find um, yes, answers your highest need to serve, to help, to change the world, to leave it a better place. So find that which really resonates with your heart, with your intuition, with your soul. You'll find that through asking for help, ask for guidance, ask Maitreya uh, or ask your own uh, uh, it within your own religion or without a religion, speak to your soul, ask for help. You will get guidance. The masters never refuse to help and give the guidance that you need. It might not be what you ask for, but you will receive the guidance and help you need. Ask for that. Meditate. 
go out and do some work which will help others, which will start locally, start, start in your own community. It might be simply collecting rubbish, uh, doing something to do with uh, stopping plastic, uh, the use of in, in your neighborhood, and so on. And then perhaps commit yourself in some way to a larger ideal, something like how and, – and educate yourself, read, study, develop, speak to others, join with others. There are all sorts of ways. Maitreya has given um, a new prayer, a prayer for the new age, which is not so much a prayer as an affirmation. It is an affirmation which says, you are divine. I, I'm not giving you the right words right now, but it, it helps you to identify with the highest in yourself, which is your divine nature. And My in that God. way, it moves you forward. Say that sentence one more time. I, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. And in that way, we can help move ourselves forward. It is taking a hand in our own evolution and our own spiritual evolution. And it helps, of course, it helps the world. My guest is Felicity Elliott. She's the chief editor of Share International Magazine. Felicity, one more time, please tell our listeners where they can find out more about Share International, the work that you do, and locations in the United States and Canada. Right. Well, I'd like to start with the United States. So um, for the United States, you should go to www.share, that is S-H-A-R-E hyphen international dot U-S. And for Canada, it is dot C-A for Canada. And um, there is also an address I can give you for the United States uh, that is in Berkeley, uh, in California. And um, if you'd like a telephone number, perhaps I can give you later on, but it is Share International USA PO Box 5537 Berkeley, California 94705. And please give the phone number. And the phone number is, um, so it would be um, 510 883 one eight four eight. Felicity, thank you so much for joining us and sharing this very important message. My great pleasure, and thank you so much. And thank you for joining us on Destination Unlimited. I'm Victor the Voice Furman. Have a wonderful week.